we're, <laughs> the dog walked through the questions and now we're all jumbled. Yes, um, trying to pick another one. But since you have all that wonderful training in, uh, in nutrition, I'm so curious about what your eating habits are. Well, they have changed a lot over time. So I first got interested in nutrition because I just simply wanted to be thinner. So um, that's what it started as. Um, I started working out in addition to that. I just started feeling really good. And I wanted to make sure I was putting the right things in my body. And um, I really started investigating it more way before I enrolled in IIN. Um, when I started investigating my thesis, well, my capstone thesis project for um, my undergrad. And it was all about the food uh, cultures of Italy versus food cultures of the United States. Um, because uh, she knows this, but I'll share. I went to, I graduated from the American University of Rome. So, um, and we were actually there at the same time or like yeah. right after each other. We just missed each other. We just missed each other by like maybe one semester. I know. <laughs> We've been like shadowing each other throughout life. Um, but I was doing research for the thesis for, um, for my degree. And I just was so um, shocked and really, really angry when I learned that how political the food system is and how it's really managed by, um, you know, of course we know the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture um it's managed a lot by them they put out these um what's it called the food pyramid different things like that but um the united states department of agriculture is meant to um protect the agricultural interests of the united states it's not necessarily anything to do with nutrition and the more i learned bamboozled <laughs> it was just it was just crazy i mean at one point and i don't know what the number is now but at one point nine out of the 13 board members that sat on the nutrition panel that came up with this pyramid um, had financial ties to the meat and dairy industry. And it just was like, what? Why are these people able to make these choices and put out these um, guidelines, you know, these advises, mm -hmm. advisements on um, health? So that, um, that started like a real big light bulb for me. And then I'm sure a lot of people who watch this have heard of What the Health or Food Inc. Um, and then there's Game Changers. So I really got interested in a plant-based lifestyle. Um, and I really enjoy eating a plant-based lifestyle. I feel like my digestion just works better. You know, like everything's go going good. I, um, I don't feel heavy after a meal when I eat plant-based. Um, I'm not 100% plant-based though. So I um, tend to eat probably about like 85% plant-based. Um, I, it's just the, I, I like the way I feel when I eat that way. And I, when I choose to deviate, I try to make sure that I choose um, animal products that are humanely raised, they're organic, grass-fed, that type of, um, that type of industry is what I want to support. And mm -hmm. I, firmly believe we vote every time we spend like you like some the most radical act sometimes is going to the grocery store and I want to put my money where my mouth is so um and I just feel better eating eating that way so that's that's mainly what I do what about yourself um so <laughs> in the yoga world we have the principle of ahimsa which is not, it's non-violence. Okay. Um, but because yoga is so ancient and it predates the convenience of a grocery store, there aren't any specifications on what we should be doing. Um, so we know that goals are, if we clean up the things that we're putting into our body, we're going to have better health. And so that kind of operates for us on a spectrum. Um, for me personally, I am something of an ovo pescatarian I do okay, have a yeah. couple of food sensitivities, including wheat, um, oh, okay. including, so that's not just gluten, like the whole, the whole wheat. Yeah. Bulgur, everything. Yeah. yeah. So everything. Um, You've worked to work through some of those, right? I went to my witch doctor. <laughs> yes. I love a good witch doctor story. Okay, well, witch um, I had actually, I wasn't going to, I had no intention of really addressing them because it was wheat, 
whey in like tremendous amounts and soy. And so those were things that I was kind of used to avoiding anyway. I have a history in bodybuilding and I was a personal trainer for a very long time. So I had my pasta substitute or if I was going to eat with my family and we're Italian, it just, it is what it is. And you know, it's one night and I won't overdo it. Right. Um, but I decided to, (laughs) I decided to get help when I developed a sensitivity to eggs and they were such a staple for me following my bodybuilding show, which was five years ago. I haven't done it since. And um, I got a referral from a friend of mine who's, who's going to be on this show soon. Huh? And she's like, you need to go to David Kennett. He works in Santa Barbara in New York City, and he's coming into New York City um, within the month. So I made an appointment with him and he is a sound healer and he's also, um, a, an allergist, a holistic allergist. So (laughs) it was a really interesting session. He like picked up my foot and went like, Ooh, yeah. And like, I was telling, I was telling the first guy that I dated after my divorce about it. He's like, I can't believe you got shaken down for however much money. I was like, don't unravel the healing. Like, yeah, if it works, it works. It works. Effect, like, don't ruin this for me. I yeah. can finally eat again, and it feels so good. Um, but I, anyway, that was my my witch doctor. I story. agree with what you said. <laughs> if the placebo works, just let it keep working. Like, it's it's okay. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with the woo. I you know how many it, sessions did it take, or was it like one session? Just one session. Oh wow, I'm impressed. And I went back years later to address the wheat allergy, but. Um, so I've been ovo pescatarian for a while. My parameters around that is if it's food that serves to me, I'm eating it as long as, you know, unless it's something I really don't want to eat. I'm not huge on pork. I've never been huge on pork. So even if it's offered to me, I probably don't want it. Um, <laughs> I don't really, I'm not a big fan of ham, but if somebody's like, we have prosciutto di parma, I'm going to be like, okay, I'm you got I'm a candle because I feel like yes. we have a, we have to do that. <laughs> and like you have Ayurvedic training as well. So yes. you know that that combination's like not great for you. And it's like, oh, I, I know. won't eat it all the time. It'll be an indulgence. It's the Italian just sneaking into my soul from mm-hmm. being there for so long. <laughs> so it's, it's not something we do a lot, combo. but like if you do that, you know, once over the summer, I feel like you're going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of the, it's something that you would probably have to put together at home. Yeah, I don't think anywhere around here <laughs> so serves that. Not, but not in Baton Rouge. No, not yet. Maybe one day. So, but yeah, so it was interesting because I had tried to go plant-based earlier in my life when I was a personal trainer. And I got to watch my motivation change where um, early on it was... I don't care about animals, but I realize that there is a way to lose weight and I want to test it out before I give it to clients. And then that kind of grew into, there's a lot of hormones in yes, animals as you're yes. being slaughtered. I'm like, maybe I'll, maybe I'll scale it back because I can't afford ethically raised meat. Um, and I think it was after I came home from Rome that I really started to confront the fact that I really do care about about animals and their welfare. And so as often as possible, I would like to eat things that were ethically raised and ethically killed and just healthier for me. It's better for the animal. It's better for the industry that I prefer to support. It's also better for the environment too. Because I mean, initially I started it for health reasons as well. And the more it's, it's like going down that rabbit hole. Once you know something, you can't unknow it. Um, and one of my like thesis, uh, um, adventures is I went to an actual dairy farm where they make all the mozzarella and it was so much fun, but they took us on a tour of the farm. This is in Italy. And like the animals are just running free. They're so happy. Like when it's time for them to get milk, they just like, you know, walked up there because somebody's there and it's not a huge, um, it's not a huge, it's a huge business, but it's all, it's, they do lots of little local places and not these giant 
factories mm -hmm. where the cows aren't treated as well. And I mean, I'm telling you, it was beautiful. There was rolling hills everywhere. The little goats were around everywhere. The goats and the cows were everywhere. And the a guy, it, it was just, it was beautiful to really see the whole process and animals being treated well. And I, I don't know, I think it, it changed me too, because then I, then I started looking at our animal agriculture. Um, I highly advise everybody to read their book, The Omnivore's Dilemma. And it doesn't really advocate for any particular uh, lifestyle, um, but it does take you down the different agricultural um, tracks in the United States, like the local level, the, um, our, the, the big industry, and also like the, um, like the hunter who would go slaughter his own uh, mm -hmm. deer or something. Um, and it takes you through different agricultural trains and describes a lot of the um, business side of it. And uh, it's, it was really eye opening. I think that's a good place for people to start um, learning about that. So I agree. I moved, I transitioned the meaning of why I was doing it. So it's kind of fun. It is kind of fun. And I think looking back, um, being in gyms where it's, there's like a machismo around, even though, you know, even though I was a woman, I was often the only female trainer on staff. And there is just an element of like having to hold your own and having to, for me in my early twenties, having to kind of blend in and fit in and just, you know, that was my environment. And you know what you know until you know more. <laughs> yeah, you, you do the best you can with what you have. And when you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm.